when did you actually start hairdressing, Steve? Because I, mean, I did mention in the email yeah. that we together, yeah. joint, we'd had 69 years' experience in this industry, which obviously, <laughs> obviously you're much older than me. Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <definitely. laughs> so you had the 60 years and I had the 9 years. Yeah. <laughs> so when did you actually start hairdressing? I started hairdressing back in 1980. Um Literally just as, you know, sort of punk era, punk scene. And um, it was all through the music business that I got into hairdressing. It was literally, uh, I was looking for a job to do because I, I was doing um, semi-professional musician. And then I was uh, looking for something to do. So, um, because as you know, in the music game, it's, it's always up and down and, you know, it's, it's not really a stable mm. job. So I was just looking for something. And just on a whim, I went along to... Uh, uh, or booked an appointment to go and see uh, uh, a guy in a salon who just opened up and had my first interview. But funny enough, the night before, I went and saw this band that I'd been waiting to see. And uh, lo and behold, the guy that interviewed me was the uh, lead singer out of the band. So the rest was history. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's a good story. So, yeah, I got into hairdressing yeah. and, uh, you know, I couldn't think of anything better, you know, running my fingers through girls' hair all day and, and being paid for it, it was great. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, how about you? What, what did? How did you get into it? Well, I, I kind of fell into hairdressing really soon because again, it was around the punk rock era. Yeah. But <clears throat> something always used to happen in my and what it was, although my mother was not a hairdresser, everybody used to come to the house to have the hair cut. Yeah. So in the seventies, when. Uh, <clears throat> When David Bowie had kind of released Ziggy Stardust, he had the spike hair and the, it was orange. Yeah. Well, at the time I had kind of long flicked hair, but I was only I was only ten or eleven at the time. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I I got a picture of my sister's magazine. What it's called? Yeah. Not the name of the magazine now, but one of these magazines, and I had a picture of David Bowie with his red hair. And I stuck it on the back of the kitchen door and I said to my mum, I want my hair just like that. <laughs> and then she said, well, you're starting high school next week. <laughs> I said, I don't care. I want it like that, really. <clears throat> she cut my hair like that. Mm. And actually, I just really fell into hairdressing then. So <clears throat> when the punk rock thing started, <clears throat> I've been cutting people for a while. Probably when I was about 13, I started to cut people's hair. Yeah. And uh, probably by the age of 15, punk rock was really happening. I was the one who used to cut everybody's hair. And I was kind of the allocated hairdresser. Mm -hmm. But funnily enough, I didn't, um, I, I didn't actually get into hairdressing straight away. Because I always had this, just bear in mind, of course, this was 70s, 80s. I also was a bit of a gay professor. That's right. And I was a bit nervous about getting to it, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah. I um, I became a landscape gardener <laughs> for four years. And I hated it really, but I did it just for the money because I could buy myself a lot of stuff. I did that for four years and then eventually I thought, no, I'm gonna try this hairdressing stuff and have a go. Yeah. And it started from there really. So yeah. 1980, 82 I did college finished and started working in a salon. Wow. Actually, I finished my college in just over 12 months. Yeah. Instead of doing the full three years, I did it in 12 months, just over. Mm -hmm. And because uh, I raced through everything, the teacher said to me, well, you can leave early if you like. If you can get a job in a salon, you can leave early. And I actually had the highest um, qualification in, in that college at the time. For all the years that I've been there, nobody had had a qualification that high before. So wow. I must, yeah. although I was simple at school, I must have been doing something right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like me. I was terrible <laughs> at school. But, but yeah, and, and the same for me, really. Um, you know, when I started in the salon, I did a, 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 an apprenticeship. So I've actually got my apprenticeship papers. Um, and I did that route. So a lot of my work was done actually in the salon. Now, the interesting thing for me was that we was. Um, we did lots and lots of show work from the word go, uh, which fulfilled that sort of stage side for me yeah. that I was getting from the yeah, you know, music industry. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I enjoyed that. 
And um, then I went on to, uh, quite early on, about in my third year, um, I went on to shop floor and uh, was a very busy stylist and then led up to managing a salon. And then we opened another salon in another town um, and uh, I took over managing that and the business um, the business really, really grew from there. And um, so I started doing all the training, all the management um, for those uh, for two salons and then we gradually grew from there. And in about 1995, I, I decided to leave. I tried buying into the salons that I was in because I was always promised, but... Um, it didn't really transpire, you know. So anyway, I left and uh, I opened my own salon in 1995, and um, mm. made a complete hash of it for the first year. <laughs> it's terrible. Well, let me, let me stop you there. Let me stop you there for a sec. Yeah. So, so obviously you've been like myself. You've been a hairdresser. Yeah. Working in a salon, managing these people who are pain in the backside and so on. Mm -hmm. You know, we're doing all the usual stuff. So. <clears throat> This dream of opening your own salon, like I did as well. Yeah. I mean, the difference, the difference for me is I got fired everywhere I worked. <laughs> so I either got fired or I walked out. Yeah. I just, I couldn't talk to being married by someone else. Yeah. So, but <clears throat> it's interesting, you very quickly understand that the, the owner of the salon has to manage the salon. Yeah. So, I, obviously, I've got my own stories of what happened from the day I opened my first salon. So what about you, see how easy it was it to manage a salon when you opened it? Well, when I first opened, it was just me, it was myself, um, one other stylist and a junior. Well, bef you know, even before that, I, bef when I'd actually left, it was me and a junior and we was doing it freelance because I was trying to train her up ready to open the salon. So, so we did that for about six months and then we actually got the salon open and I took on a, a, a stylist, a very young stylist. Um, and then uh, two juniors, and, and we just started um, building on the business. It grew very quickly, probably too quickly, in the first three years, and I ended up getting in quite a lot, of, quite a financial state. Um, and then you know you start getting all the staff problems as well. And, you know it's like when you're down, you know, they, all the problems seem to come out of the woodwork. So I found myself for the first time ever having to. Um, Ask for help and seeking consultancy, which is what yeah. I did. I, th I think I think one of the probably the differences with us is you had experience managing salons, so you had systems that you were just kind of following through. And so, yeah. yeah. But when I opened my first salon, I had no idea. Yeah. I just I just thought that if you have it in here, yeah, it'll all be fine. Yeah. I came from a different angle, really. Mm. And of course, I had a very similar situation with really. I mean, my first salon was only 250 feet at the time. Hmm. Right. And uh, I couldn't afford to refit it, so I sold my car to pay for the fit of the salon. Yeah. But I did most of it myself. But um, it was just me and two staff. Yeah. Uh, but very, very yeah. quickly, I realized that <clears throat> a couple of things going on. One, it was it was in a, it was in a little shopping mall where we were tucked right in a corner. Mm -hmm. So if nobody knew you were there, nobody knew you were there. Right. Yeah. Quickly realised I thought, God, I'm going to have to. I, I didn't under, I didn't know anything about marketing at all, and so I thought, well, how do these people in? So somebody said, well, go to the printer in the village, and he'll print you some uh, flyers you can push through people's doors. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I did. And uh, it didn't really work. <laughs> it didn't work at all, really. Yeah. So, obviously, the first thing I found out as a salon owner was the struggle to bring clients in. Yeah. Uh, I'll, tell, I'll tell you next, next in a minute, but just well, just let me ask you, Steve, what about you? How, how was clients in initially? Because you said you went fast. Yeah, so I, I was lucky in that I left a salon. Huh? How many salons were in the town where your salon was? Uh, there was 13. How many? 13. How many? 13. 13 yeah. yeah. Um, I had a really good reputation where I used to work, and I took on the salon, and I was a really busy stylist. So I was a typical, very busy stylist, putting 95% of the money in the till, 
trying to do everything, trying yeah. to train people, trying to put money in the seal, mm. trying to do marketing, trying to look after clients. Um, yeah. yeah, and it it was really, really tough. You know, because it was trying to keep mm. the standard of the business up, but of course you've got all the other things going. And the thing that I wasn't really trained in, I was fine with people management, but one of my big things was the financial side. I just didn't understand it. So I didn't understand the numbers yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. No, no. So like you said, you know, I had systems to go into, which was great. But the numbers, I just kept, you know, I could always remember it, a little junior saying to me one Saturday, we was, I was counting the money at the end of the day on a Saturday and I looked into the till and she, she was sitting next to me and she was just shaking her head. She's going, and I looked at her and I said, What's the matter? So she said, what do you do with all that money? That's right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and it was like... <coughs> and you said, I pay everybody else apart from... Yeah, that's right. And I was. You know, my, my, <laughs> all my staff, by one, you know, one of the juniors, but all my, my team then, my young team of hairdressers was all earning more than, than I was. And, yeah. um, and as I say, that's why eventually I, I, I sought help. Because I just thought I'm just being a busy fool, you know. I'm 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 busy, but I'm not making any money. It's pointless, you know. Mm. And it's very common, Steve. Like this, the salons I've dealt with over the years, you know, mm. consultant and so on, common that yeah. um, the salon owner is taking over fifty percent of the income. Yeah. I mean, I, about two years ago, I did some work with big salons in London. Yeah. And the salon owner. Now, he, he had actually just under 50 staff. I can't remember. I think there was 24, 25 stylists, mm -hmm. right? 24, yes. 25 stylists. He was still taking more than 50% of the income. Wow. Yeah. Oh, mm. Incredible. Yeah. And it's, quite, it's a common mistake someone was made, but I just wanted to say, like, uh, <clears throat> when I opened my first salon, uh, one of the, the biggest headaches, apart from bringing clients in, of course, the second thing was just dealing with staff. Yeah. You know, very, very quickly, as a salon owner, these guys these guys are almost robotic. Mm. They want to turn up, go and sit in the back, make a drink, yeah. have a coffee, and if a client comes in, it's always... <sighs> so you can have five stylists free... And they're going, well, I'm not doing it, you do it. No, well, I'm not doing it. I just like, well, no. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, of yeah. course, the, yeah. new, the new skill you have to learn is how the hell do you deal with people? Mm. We're paying them more than we're getting paid. Yeah. But you have yeah. to fight them. <laughs> you have to fight them. <laughs> to do yeah. That's right, yeah. So, on the, on the marketing side and then on the people well, what do you think the biggest mistake you were making on the market in the early days? Well, the biggest, the biggest mistake. Fail in, on that market. The biggest mistake in the early days was I wasn't doing any. <laughs> because I was, yeah, I was, I you know, um, I was a, I was really busy, and I thought I could do it through word of mouth. But I soon yeah. realised that when I started taking, you know, new people on, um, although we was getting really good word of mouth going on in the town it wasn't enough because you know my team were growing my, my juniors were ready to go on the shop floor I was having to hold them back a bit um, and then of course when they did become a stylist I then got a full stylist wage to start paying um, yeah so my biggest mistake was not not doing anything and 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 literally I had to start learning really really quick I mean the good thing is that mm. you know I took steps to start learning um, and I made some real bad mistakes you know I started off uh, got collared by one of the reps you know they said oh the saving grace was to buy spend five grand on this in-house magazine <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's know, right that saved your business you know, <laughs> that's great marketing so I thought yeah that's a good idea mm -hmm. so I did a photo shoot that cost me two grand to do a photo shoot and yeah. I thought, oh great you know and then I'll just go around and post them all around the houses which is what we did and I think we got about three yeah. clients out of that <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, th I think one of the biggest mistakes I ever made was I signed up for a, a salon system. I, f I forgot what it's called now. Uh, it's been called uh, Computel at the time. Oh, Something yeah. Like, I can't remember a bit. But we signed up for the system, and uh, 
I was always an early adopter. I always am, and I always have been with everything, really. Yeah. So if something yeah. appears today, yeah, I tend to get into it. I think it's going to look cool, you know. Yeah. So. <clears throat> In 1991, I was doing direct mail with a computer before any salon in, in the UK. Yeah. So there's nobody doing it. And we were sending out about 500 pieces of direct mail every week without fail. Mm. <clears throat> and we didn't have, you know, 1991, you just didn't have the proper facility. You know, you had dot matrix printers, or you, or you would take one letter to the printer down the road, but it wasn't personalized then. Yeah. Because I wanted it to say, Dear Steve, your hair's ready for a haircut, blah, blah, blah. Mm. So, when I, so I, I sourced this system. And what I didn't realize, because I was a bit like you, I'm not, I'm not like great with numbers, really. Yeah. And this guy came and he said, uh, he said It'll cost you £200 a month. Um, over the, you know, the next three months, it'll only cost you whatever. And I didn't realize it was an Elise that I just couldn't get out of. Mm -hmm. And for these two systems, believe it or not, over twenty thousand pounds <laughs> just for these two old crappy computers. No, and I couldn't get I couldn't get out of it in the end. I couldn't yeah. get out of it, and them <clears throat> broke uh, probably six months into buying it, and this this company would not repair it at all. And in the end, they went bust. <laughs> but the point being is, there was still a valuable lesson from that, <clears throat> and it was this, that you have to go and get the clients. Yeah. The clients won't just come to you, you have to go and get them. Mm. Because your salon, my salon, every salon, we're all losing 12 to 15% of our clients yeah. annually or every month. So 12 to 15% of clients disappear, but if we only have a 5% intake of new clients, the salon's dying. Yeah. And most salon owners don't think about these numbers, and they are critical numbers, really. Yeah. So, so I think the... Because I want to talk about your new life and all that stuff in your new salon in Australia and everything else mm. at some point, but what, what do you think the big thing that you learned through um, actually applying marketing into your business goes then? Because let, let's just change the word marketing for a minute. So we're not really talking about marketing as we know it. Mm. What we're talking about systems to bring clients into the salon and on that chair and paying some cash. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. So how do I get how do I get 120,000 people from this town that my salon is here and I will use that salon? Mm. So how, what, what did you learn from? Apart from everything I taught you. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> I think the, the really important thing was to understand your numbers and know how to measure your business so that, you know, mm. if you've got a hole in the bucket, that you know where that hole is and start to plug it. It's really important to be able to measure stuff as, you know, as you, any of the sort of marketing you do, whether it be doing shows, whether it be doing, you know, stuff in shopping centres or whatever it might be, um, having a way of measuring that, that I learned. You know um, that's so important because then I could start mm. saying, "Is it working?" You know, and not going down a road mm. of something where you know you're you're bashing your head and getting this stuff done, but it actually it's not working. So we we had to measure it. So that that was probably one of the biggest things, and 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 I became almost anal at measuring, which was good. You know, it was I went from one extreme knowing yeah. nothing to to being able to pinpoint. Yeah. Any anything you know, looking at a PL and being able to say, "Well, I know what's going wrong," and that's what eventually led me on to going you know, oh, yeah, consultancy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so it's, that, it's that's really important. That, yeah, no, it's interesting to hear that because you, I don't have a salon now, but you reminded me of things I used to do. You know, so although I didn't really know the numbers, I knew that to get one or two clients in because we didn't really measure measure it. Mm. To get a couple of new clients in, maybe say, maybe three or four, I knew for a fact I had to give out 100 flyers. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't get two or three flyers and expect two or three clients in. Yeah. We had to give out. So I got to a stage where I would give a pile of flyers, mm. say 100, 
Yeah. And we had to, we had certain systems set up. You know, they had to do the shops, and they had to be very specific as they were walking down the street. Yes. You couldn't just hand them out on the, the front like that. Yeah. So I used to say to my stylist, don't come back in the shop until you've handed out every single voucher, mm. every single one. Mm. And of course, when you talk about data and tracking and measuring, it used to have the expiry time or the expiry date on it as well. But yeah, it is interesting. I mean, you have to track and measure this stuff. Yeah. But of course, as I got hands with my computing stuff, uh, before I sold my salons in 2003, I understood that you had to track and measure the clock coming in or the response to the letters and some yeah. of the stuff we were doing. Because, <clears throat> of course, you suddenly find out thing, how many clients are missing from the salon. Mm. You know that thing, Steve, right, when you've been doing, you've been doing um, car and tear for the past 12 years. Mm. And you think, oh, I've not seen her for ages. Yeah. She walks past you on the street. And she's had a haircut somewhere else. And she doesn't want to look at you, and you don't want to look at her. <laughs> That's right. But you both want to know. She, oh my God, I hope Steve didn't see me. Yeah. And you're thinking, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. 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 <clears throat> so, I really looked after her. Just for doing with right? Yeah, go on. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you come out with these things like, yeah, I really looked after her. I can't believe that. What a bitch. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But the fact is, we didn't because she went somewhere else. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah. But I worked out this system where there's tracked and measured, which was to direct mail those clients to bring them back into the salon. Yeah. Because I think yeah. being human, we are a bit sensitive. We think they've left the salon because they hate me. Yeah. And actually, she still thinks Steve is great. Yeah. But, you know, her husband may have lost his job. She may have lost a job. She may not be able to afford it that month. Or she may have got an offer to go somewhere else with her pal. She took the offer. She thinks, well, I'll have a go. And then she's thinking, well, I can't to Steve now because I'm just going to be embarrassed. Yeah. So there's lots and lots of reasons that she <clears throat> or he has gone somewhere else. Yeah. It's probably not the reason we... <laughs> no, that's right. So actually, right. I, I, I actively pursuing those clients, and we, we got to a stage where we, we did a campaign where we got in over ninety percent of missing clients on one list. Mm. So that means if there was hundred clients missing, <clears throat> suddenly we had a new input ninety clients spending money. Yeah. So you do have to you do have to chase those yeah. that, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, sorry, Steve, you want to say something? Yeah, and I was, I was going to say that, you know, that the the thing that I really start to realise with all that was that, you know, I had systems for training people to cut hair, I had systems and procedures for client care and all the rest of it, and I had actually built systems and procedures for my fan, financial stuff and my management. You know, I used mm. to take a day off on a, a Tuesday to do all my, you know, all my admin yeah. stuff and run the salon and stuff. So I was working on it and not in it. But then I think the penny dropped for me when I started having a system of, of marketing, you know, getting new people in. So I started to have all these new these systems um, to help grow my business and get new clients through the door. Because, you know, at the end of the day, it, it was particularly when we went through the recession that the big problem was that everybody wanted your clients and your client had to make the decision, essentially. And we was more of a top-end salon, so, you know, the, the, the average spend yeah. was high. You know, do they go on holiday or do they have their hair done? It, it's actually mm. got that. I can remember clients saying that to me. You know, of course they chose to have their hair done, mm. but um, it, that's how it got. You know, there was there was it was literally do I buy a new dress or do I have my hair done? It weren't I can have both. It's I have to choose. So you have to you know I had to have a a way of making them choose us. And um, partly mm. or a big part of that was through marketing. I think I learned with the hairdressing salons also that, is that um, <clears throat> it took me a while to learn it, but people tend to think that this is a disaster or I have to pay tax or that doesn't work or the plumbing's failed or whatever. Mm. Uh, after a few years, I kind of learned that I, that is part of business. Yeah. So instead of seeing it as a disaster or a negative, it's actually part of business. Mm. <laughs> you know, you, 
you can't have really one without you can't have summer without winter yeah. and you can't have spring without an autumn yeah. so really <clears throat> business is kind of it's a little bit seasonal and obviously we have storms that we don't like that maybe create a bit more problems than we wanted mm. but just, just on that front one thing I discovered in the sounds was obviously there was always an issue with staff yeah well, I, I designed a system which the listeners you know, I designed a system where we used to always lose our stylist after the 18 months Without fail, that went for a while, really. Yeah. And he's thinking, God, what are we going to do here? So instead of thinking, oh, my God, somebody's left again. Yeah. I always took a style of on the basis that I knew they would leave in 18 months. Mm. So I created a system with new come-through stylists all the time. Yeah. So I did two things. One, I always had stylists in the wings ready to break through. Because you know what they're like, Steve? It's like they're ready to break through. You don't quite want to let them on the floor because you're not thinking they're not going to be quite right. Yeah. yeah. And you know you're going to have to put things right, you have to speak to them and so on. Mm -hmm. But you know, the same, if you don't put them on the shop floor, they're going to go somewhere else. Yeah. So I always had this system that I had these new kids pushing through all the time, <laughs> just ready to run it so that when these staff left, they would be able to come on the shop floor. Mm. But this created an even bigger problem for me. And the bigger problem was I still worked out how to keep staff. So my staff started staying for eight, nine, or ten years. In fact, towards the end of the salon, when I sold it, the staff had all been there eight and ten years, most of the staff. Mm. <clears throat> and uh, so the salon started to grow really, really fast, really fast, because I had these new guys coming through, and they wanted to go on the shop floor or they would leave. Yeah. And I had these stylists now who were growing with the salon, Mm -hmm. And just refused to refuse to leave. Yeah. So it was a good problem. Yeah. 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 But the, the reason yeah. they stayed was I did something that uh, no salons were doing at this time. I'm not really sure if people do it now, but salons I speak to, the the definitely And that is really it's giving stylists uh, what I thought they would want from the job. When I used to interview them, I used to say, them, tell me exactly what you need in your life to make you happier. Mm. So for instance, one of the guys who worked for me, he said, well, I really need to get out of the house. I, I need my own house. I said, okay. So, and then the other thing he needed was a new car. So what I did, I built his job around to him buying a new house. Mm -hmm. So I worked out his mortgage, did his repayments. I worked out his deposit. <coughs> You name it, I worked out absolutely everything for his, for his house. And I also worked out his repayments on his car. So what I then did is I then built his job around this. <clears throat> and I had a financial advisor come to the salon to set up a mortgage for him and everything. Right. <clears throat> I used to then say to him, look, Darren, his name was. I said, well, okay, Darren, listen, here's what we've got. If you do this every week, then he knew his salon figure. If you do, say, £2,000 every week, which you could do in the salon, mm -hmm. you do two grand a week, that means you'll be able to afford the mortgage and you'll still be able to afford to go on home and yeah. you'll still be able to afford this car. So in his... Suddenly, the job was no longer a job. It was a way to... in his life. Mm. And I used to do that with all my staff. And the difference at made, Steve, was just absolutely monstrous. Yeah. It was just monstrous. Yeah. I, I, I had a new girl, Mandy, start at the salon, and she was manager She was brilliant. <clears throat> and um, I said to her, what do you want? And she was pregnant with a second child. And she said, well, the one thing we really need to do is, um, I forgot her husband's name, but he lost his job, just. Mm -hmm. uh, he was in marketing, actually, but he lost his job. So, so um, uh, you know, we're about to have the second child. We're in this one-bedroom house. And I set the same thing up again, and she never left. Mm -hmm. And I did the same with all the staff. So I think the reason it's worth honesty is because it does take time to learn this stuff. Yeah. I, th I think really in the internet age, we within yesterday. Yeah. But it's just not possible. No, that's right. What do you think? Yeah. No, it's not. I think it's, um, 
you know, it is people do want, you know, everything instantly and, and want, you know, it, I just want it fixed now, you know, and you're right. You have to put the time in, you have to put in, um, you know, you have to find out what people's pain points are and, and what they need from their job and, and stuff. So that's really mm. important. We used, to, we used to do a similar thing where um, I, I used to employ a lot of um, back to work mums. Um, and we actually did a case study for the government, uh, work life balance, it was called. And we, we proved financially that we could make the business profitable and still have all, all the mums have six weeks holidays. As long as we manage their columns yeah. properly, um, we, yeah, we could do yeah. that. So that, that, worked really, that worked really, really well. But on the other, the other side of the coin was, you know, these young stylists would start on and, and they just, it's almost like, and I still see it today, you know, they, they almost d demand that they're busy. You know, where's, where's my clients? You know, just yeah. sit there, you know. And, and as we both know, yeah. it's, it's changed so much. I mean, we've had more change in the last four years than I think the whole of the hairdressing history. Um, mm. It's just massive, massive change. And I, and I think if you're still doing stuff that you used to be doing, um, you know, you need to really start looking at what you're doing and you know, moving stuff forwards. Just, just kind of like a couple of those changes. A couple of those changes is how much the um, the internet plays a part now in um, everything that we do, and I'm not talking about Facebook. <laughs> it's I think mm. you know Facebook has a a little bit of a little bit of um, help towards your marketing and stuff, but it, there's so much more, you know. Um, and I just see it time and time again that people are just relying on that one thing rather than looking at many different aspects of their. Yeah growing their business you know um, you know again I think it's the uh, you know the clients are so much more aware of what's going on because of the internet you know uh, yeah they, they know yeah. before many stylists what the new looks are you know be, before stylists mm -hmm. what the new, new coloring techniques are because they've seen it all on social media or or you know newspapers and of course it's it's so instant now um, you know, we, we stop things like buying magazines in the salons now. We have a handful, but it's because you can get all the access on the internet. You know, so we just yeah. have iPads in the salon that we can use. So you have yeah. to really, you know, even if you hate technology, you've got to adopt it, otherwise you're going to be left behind. And I think you've got to adopt systems so that you don't get lost in it all because there's so much going on. It's so easy to get completely overpowered by it, and you need that that system, that systematic thing that you're doing day in, day out, spending maybe 15 minutes on your business where you're just following a system to get everything going. So I think that's the difference. It's interesting to see, you, you know, for me, like, I mean, obviously, I had my salons for nearly 20 years. Yeah. And I had, you know, in the past. Since 2003, I've worked with hundreds of different businesses from Fortune 50s even mm. to people about to launch on the stock exchange and all kinds of things. And <clears throat> to be honest with you, the, the one thing interesting for me, I always relate all my work with the, these big companies still to hairdressing. Yeah. Because I think most of the stuff I learned came from dealing with people one to one. Mm. Yeah. And the one thing I always do when I work with a client is the first thing I always do is strip everything back to the human being. Yeah. Because although technology, for, in, for instance, I had some trousers altered last week, mm -hmm. as an example. So the first thing I did is I had looked for alterations in this town called Hale, where we live. I had looked for alterations, and the first thing Google brings up is reviews. Yeah. One of the places that I wanted to take my trousers do a one hour turnaround had a three star review. So <laughs> it was for my wedding, these trousers. Yeah. So I thought, well, shall Tomorrow I was saying, don't take your wedding trousers there, just in case. <laughs> I said, well, I want these trousers just for the weekend because I bought three pair of trousers. Yeah. So I thought, well, I'll take yeah. one pair of trousers and I picked them up on Saturday. And to be honest, it did a crap job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which, the point is, I'd read the review, 
And I knew it wasn't going to be great because this company had loads of reviews that just really weren't that good. Yeah. And one lady said, if you are married, do not take your stuff to this place. <laughs> so we say my salons as well now. Yeah. Somebody gets a bad haircut, the first thing they do is they post it all over Facebook, all over Twitter, all over Instagram, all over their social media. Yeah. Uh, on on the whatever, the email in and said, email, look at the state of this. Yeah. You know, the the they sat there with a look at That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's impossible yeah. to get away from. Yeah. So but the point being really is I think some people get so wrapped up in technology you do forget about that one on one thing. Yeah. Because uh, then, back. yeah, what? yeah. No, I was gonna say, yeah, because people buy people, you know, and it's yeah. uh, at the end of the day, it's all about the, the people thing. Because I mean, you know, we've all had uh, mistakes happen in salons. You know, it happens to everybody, and it happen in the future as well. But it's the way that you you deal with it, um, so that you know those clients don't go straight on social media because you're being professional about what you've done and 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 all the rest of it and deal with it but um you're right it's about building those relationships with customers getting feedback regular feedback from customers and and managing that so that you really you've got your finger on the pulse with the business i learned a lot of this massive amounts of this when i moved over to australia from the uk and I still had a salon running. Um, you know, I was still sending mystery clients in. We was doing mm. various things to measure what was going in the salon because I wasn't there. I could only be told by my manager what was happening. You know, yeah. and it was quite interesting. Yeah, and I, I, I think the lesson there obviously is that you know, as a salon owner today, you are. I mean, I, I'm amazed actually how many salon owners still don't use computers. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I find it. Shocking, mm. because they see a computer as a cost. Yeah. Well, actually, if you're paying, say, even if you're paying five hundred pounds, right, which is obviously a lot of money for a small salon, mm. you pay five hundred pound a month. There's no reason if you use a computer properly, it should increase your takings by hundred pounds a day. Yeah. No question. Yeah. No question whatsoever. Yeah. But a lot of salon owners are still going, oh, God, you know, £500 a month, I'm never going to be able to afford it. Yeah. But that's the difference. When you start to see marketing for the salon as an investment rather than a cost, Yeah. that's the difference. Yeah. But just, just going back to that sewing thing, because I think it's relevant for salons as well. Yeah. I think what's interesting about that, that sewing uh, thing, right, is um, so this shop that I took the trousers to, uh, it's called the Zip Yard. And the Zip Yard is a franchise <clears throat> that left over their window and they won franchise of the year right. in the UK. Now, I could have gone into the town to where the proper ta classic tailor is. You probably would have charged me £15. You go in the change room, you put your trousers on, he measures your inside leg, your outside leg. You'll even say to you which side hang on because it makes a difference to the leg. So he does all that stuff, right? Yeah. But why did I not go up to him and I went to the zip yard? The reason is the zip yards are brilliant at marketing. Mm. That's it. They use technology, they're using the web, they're using social media, they're using all this stuff. They're yeah. brilliant at marketing. Yeah. Yet they are a three star business. And when you went in, Steve, every rail was packed. Yeah. Completely packed. Yeah. You go into traditional tailors, you don't see any items being... They'll say, yeah, we do one now and again, although they advertise alterations. Mm. Now, I see the same with salons. You can go to a brilliant salon, and you know these guys are all rock and roll. Everything is just brilliant what they're doing. Best techniques, best color, yeah. best service, best everything. What happens? You go in, the salon's dead. Yeah. You go to a mediocre salon down the road, Brilliant on Facebook, brilliant on Instagram, brilliant on social media, brilliant on emailing, brilliant with text. Yeah. You know, they're brilliant with everything. Mm. And they're packed. Yeah. We, I had a stylist years ago called Sharon. And Sharon, if you're listening to this, you know it's true. She was an extremely average hairdresser. 
See, I wouldn't let her cut my grass. There's no way. I just wouldn't let her cut my grass. <laughs> but she marketed herself so well. She, in my side, she worked for me for nearly 10 years. Yeah. From morning till night, she was... Yeah. Seen that right? You get the guys, Darren, who was brilliant. He was kind of okay, busy. Yeah. Sharon, who was not that brilliant, she was packed. Hmm. So what's the lesson? The lesson is, if you're no good at marketing your business, or you're not going to embrace it with technology these days, you're completely screwed. Yeah. You, you really are. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think the next couple of years, especially with technology, the way it's going, if you don't embrace this stuff, your salon will close. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. good hairdresser in 2018 will not be enough. Hmm. There's no way. No. no. What do you think? Yeah, well, I, I think, you know, it's it's, it's so important. I, I, I remember, just just as a, um, a really good example, we... we um, when text messaging to start coming out, you know, text reminding your clients, you know, about their appointments. We we lost on one one. This is one sale on one year over sixty thousand pounds, right? In missed, you know, missed appointments. People didn't turn up for their appointment. Yeah. And and that was purely though. Then you know, we we monitored this like mad because I was going crazy about it. Why why is this person? You ring them up and I say, oh sorry, I forgot. I'm so busy, I forgot. Yeah. Um. I looked at investing in uh, text messaging for a computer system, which was which I thought was a lot of money, but it was nowhere near sixty thousand pounds, and it literally yeah. almost annihilated it overnight, just completely yeah, right, yeah. You know, overnight. And I, and I use it to this day. And people say to me, "What a fantastic service!" You know, because I get a text to remind me about my yeah. appointment. You know, so people people expect and I think it's a great service. So if the salon down the road's not doing it, and I am. You know, that's that's yeah. another reason for us. I like going there because they, they, they text me the day before because people are so busy. Well, I, I know for a fact, Steve, Tamara has never had a single reminder of any sound she's been to. Right. Never. Right. Wow. She's never had a direct mail, a card, an email, text or anything. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, for example, I mean, as you know, I go to the work and all that stuff. Yeah. So I try and avoid, yeah. like, Bad foods. Yeah. But there's one yeah. person who texts every single week. It disrupts my whole routine. And it's Domino's Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, I'm, it's like, because we went to New York to get married. I'm all this, like, you know, I keep complaining all this stuff. And I got a text and it was Domino's Pizza. And it was two 13-inch pizzas for the price of one. <laughs> so I said to my son, Shall we get a pizza? <laughs> <laughs> and we had the Domino's pizza. But you know what? Te you, I mean, you think in a Steve. Yeah. Everybody walks around with it in their pocket. Absolutely. And, of course, all the younger people, the girls and the guys, they walk around with that. Yeah. I mean, God knows how they find their the way anyway these days. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're probably walking. No wonder people are getting killed for the texting. Yeah. But anyway... People people, if they've got this on them all the time, why are we not texting and emailing? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Or, e or even the message, the message you know, or whatever you've created for your little gang to hang out on. Yeah. Why are salons still not using this stuff? I know. I know. It's, it's a crazy. Good so, yeah. And really, picking this stuff up now and using it, you're going to be way back. Yeah. Big yeah. time. Yeah. Steve, you know, tell me the most valuable thing you've learned in your in, in hairdressing salon, in, you know, or in a, as a salon owner. What's the most valuable thing you've ever learned? The most valuable thing is how to market my business properly. That's the real yeah. key for me because, you know, it doesn't matter how good my stylists are, it doesn't matter how good my systems are, my training and all the rest of it. I'll grow slightly through word of mouth, but I need to be yeah. able to get new clients through the door. You know, and for all those reasons yeah. that you were saying earlier, you know, um, there's a natural fall off of clients. Um, you've always got, mm. you're going to have some hole in the bucket. It might be a new stylist you take on, and, and there's going to be a hole there until yeah. you get them right, and then you take a new one on, yeah. and there's going to be a hole in the bucket. So understanding marketing, and as you know, I've, I've spent so much time on this. Like, 
understanding the internet, mm -hmm. understanding how to, uh, the, the numbers work in my business so I can market the right things at the right time. Um, all this stuff is just so important. I couldn't emphasize enough how important that is. And I see it all around the world. As you know, I do quite a lot of traveling. I spend a lot of time in the States and, you know, I see it over there that some of the bigger salons, they're doing some amazing, amazing stuff to market their businesses. They're just, it's incredible what they're doing. You know, it's just, yeah. you know. Like what? Things like, um, there's a guy, um, he, he had do um, a haircut and then uh, he will then set his iPad up and he'll film the blow dry. Right? Yeah. And then the client gets that movie, he emails it back you know, to them so that when they get home, they can then um, watch how their hair was blow dried. Now, how cool is that? That's yeah, that is just insane, isn't it? This is funny. One of the one of the upgrades on um, uh, the Salon Extreme Twenty One manual mm. is use of Periscope. Oh yeah. So you know, I mean, at the end of the day, you can imagine it. If you make an announcement that you're going to be a, a live Periscope presentation. Mm. On such a day, such a time, yeah, and it's used. It's used doing like a you know a talk before and after. Yeah, what a brilliant way! What a brilliant way to bring clients into talent. Yeah, I mean, you could even take a big iPad down or create a land a live transmission into somebody else's business. Yeah, like an, another business where you know, like say, like um, say going say going down into Costa Coffee. Yeah, they have a transmission of you doing a periscope. Yeah. Live of a before and after, yeah. and you've got a coffee shop full of like you know, twenty-five women or twenty guys who are all looking for a restyle or whatever. Yeah, it's just brilliant. Yeah, just completely. Yeah. You're not harnessing that stuff these days. Yeah. Look, I'll tell you one of the one of the biggest things I learned really was actually initially take two days off the shop floor to manage my business. Yeah. It took me years to learn that. Yeah. Because it does feel like a big step. And then, of course, I came up for the, the final two years. I came off the shop floor completely. Yeah. But um, an interesting coming off the shop floor actually doubled my turnover in the salon. Yeah. So it didn't didn't increase it slightly. Yeah. Didn't decrease it at all. Mm -hmm. But when you knew how to market your business, you knew that you need time to do this stuff. Yeah. And if you don't do it, who's going to do it? Yeah. Do you know what I did? A, gonna do it. I did a similar thing. I, I, can, I can remember it so clearly. Um, I wanted to take a day off the, off the shop floor, so I worked out how yeah. much I would lose, and I put my prices up by that much, right? And I yeah. can remember the night before yeah. I was shitting myself because I didn't tell anybody. I just <laughs> thought I'm going to do it, and I was, you know, I was just thinking, That's oh a very no, <laughs> yeah, and I was thinking, oh no, you know what's, oh god, anyway. I got into the salon because I didn't announce it. I didn't put up, you know, I thought, well, Tesco's and Sainsbury's, they don't announce that the price of peas are going up, so I'm not going to yeah. announce that the haircut's yeah. going up. And I just said, you know, yeah. and if anyone moaned, I said, right, look, this time it'll be what you paid last time, but in future it's always going to be that. And do you know what happened? Yeah. Yeah. I just got busier and I took more money. Yeah, that's right. And then I had a day off, Yeah. you know, to get yeah. to work on the business. So... From personal experience, I know you've experienced it, I've experienced it, it just so works. You know, once you start working on your business and getting all this stuff right, it just makes a massive, massive difference. So I'll tell you how I came off the shop plus, Dave. Say that again, sorry. Because I, did, I, didn't want, I, didn't want to, I didn't want to come off the shop floor. I, yeah. I was crapping myself, really. Yeah. Because I thought my business would completely collapse. <laughs> so this is absolutely true. I went into the salon one day. My arm in a sling, and I told everyone I broke my arm. <laughs> <laughs> and I woke up. My arm should be broke for six weeks. <laughs> That'll give me six weeks off the shop floor to feed all my clients into a different columns. <laughs> so I used to go into the salon with my arm in a sling. <clears throat> and I used to go speak to the staff, and I used to go upstairs into my office, take the sling off. <laughs> <laughs> and then work on all day. So I, I did it quite scientifically. I had cameras set up in the shop so I could keep my eye on the salon because yeah. I was no longer in the salon. I was upstairs in the office. Yeah. 
you see what's going on in my little uh, portable TV at the time? Yeah. Portable, I mean, who has a portable TV, yeah. does it? Yeah. A little portable TV. I would watch what was going on on the floor, watch the, the staff. Yeah. I'd have my sign around my thing. But if there was a knock on the door, I used to go, I'm doing this thing on his mouth. Good. But that's how I got off the shop floor. And it worked for me, for sure. <laughs> That's a good one. I like so that. Listen, we're, going to wrap, we're going to have to wrap this call up. Uh, yeah. Obviously, there's going to be people listening to this, and of course, you know, people are not stupid. We we're trying to help people with their salons by investing in the Salon Extreme Twenty One Manual. Yeah. I mean, it is a big manual. It's it's getting bigger and bigger because of the updates that are going in it. Yeah. It's really designed for people who've um, doing any marketing or people who want to take the marketing one step further. So. Yeah. Well, what would you say on that front, just to try and encourage salon owners? Well, I think, you know, it's... Back... <coughs> oh, uh, sorry, I missed that. I'm saying that there is a money-back guarantee as well. Of course. Yeah. There's no risk. No, that's it. But I, I think, you know, the for, for me, this is the first I know of where there is actually a step-by-step -step proper marketing Manual. I mean, there's lots of things for other types, you know, sides of your business, but it's the first time I've seen something that's a step by step how to market your business. But not only that, it's yeah. right hot up to date. And as you say, you know, you've got Periscope. I mean, most people maybe don't know what we're talking about with Periscope, you know, yeah. um, because that's really new and there's, there's other new technologies coming out. And I, and I know that that's right up to the minute. And it's so critical that you you get to grips with this stuff and the great thing about having a manual is you can put it on your desk right you haven't got to fire your computer up um, and try and work mm. for a bit of software it's really easy you can just flip it open and start working through that workbook and, and really hone your marketing I think that's that's the real key to it and that's what I love about it you know it's just yeah. so important well I think the thing is it was designed I mean I've seen over the past of course, I wrote my first manual, really, very light manual, probably 95. Yeah. And which came, became Sat Builder in 99. Yeah. <laughs> but all, all these downloads and all that stuff, people just don't use them. Mm. I mean, I've downloaded ebooks and never opened them a yeah. million times. I bet yeah. you have as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. But with a manual, it's designed to be on the desk. There's lots of space in it so you can write everywhere as well. It has things like text, it has like a section on there, uh, tagging, on. Selfies online, Kardashian type stuff, yeah. <clears throat> um, Periscope, Skype consultations, there's tons of stuff in there. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's strong stuff. So, honestly, anything else you want to say before we go? Because we need to wrap up. No, I just think, you know, it's something that if, you, if you're out there and, you you know, you're, you're looking at your business, I mean, I get so many emails all the time about, you know, how can I build my clients, how can I get more clients through the door? This really has come a, come along at such a good time. It's such good timing. We've got Christmas coming up. You know, it's just absolutely brilliant timing for that. And I, I think if you don't get something like this and you sound on your nuts, absolute nuts. And mm. it will take you, you think how long it's going to take you to learn, if you tried learning that off your own back, you know, it would take, yeah, take years. Easy. You know, it's just, so no, it's, it's, that's what I'd say. You need to really seriously look at it, really. Yeah. Okay, so it's been great speaking to you. Yeah. You know, we, we'll just get, give us a little more, a little on that, because obviously you've gone from England yeah. to Australia. Yeah. Um, as fast as you can, though. Uh, how did all that come around? Because, I mean, moving to Australia is kind of a... I see your pictures on Facebook every day <laughs> and your little speedo trunks on the beach doing that <laughs> stuff and all that. That's right, yeah. <laughs> It was so just. How, how's that transition gone? It's a bit of a dream lifestyle, probably, for people listening to this. Yeah, it was. It was a real lifestyle decision. You know, we had um, in the finish, we had uh, five five salons going at different different times. You know, um, and we had over sixty staff. Um, for me, I just felt that I needed to move on and start doing something else. Um, we've been to Australia mm. on holiday a few times. I love the lifestyle. And I just thought I, I want to move my kids to a, you know, a better, better lifestyle. And the great thing is because of the stuff yeah. that I know, you know, I come straight over to Australia. I had a year off, and then um, I was doing consultancy work, and then uh, I opened a small little boutique salon, and um, set up a magazine, 
which is something that has always been my passion to do, um, yeah, where I get the opportunities. For anyone listening, Steve, where did they find that magazine? Oh, it's um, salonopinion.com. Uh, it's a free mm. magazine, and we literally interview salon owners from all around the world, people that are doing amazing stuff. Um, and it is a brilliant magazine, I have yeah, to say. Yeah, thank it you. Yeah, and it's just like some of the stuff we see is just inc absolutely incredible, you know. Um, mm. But, yeah, so it was that. It was, you know, moving over here and, and the lifestyle. You know, I live where I live is beautiful. I live just near the beach, five minutes from the beach. I go running along the seafront most mornings in my speedos and uh, you know I have parrots <laughs> parrots every day on my uh, on my veranda you know we're surrounded by lorikeets and king parrots and all that it's just, yeah, it's just it's amazing yeah, it's, you know. it's uh, yeah. and of course the weather's beautiful um, yeah so a real lifestyle decision but I couldn't have done it if I hadn't you know got to grips with all this stuff that's that's the thing you know because you can I think really the cool Steve is you've created a lot that you've probably dreamt about or always wanted yeah. from hairdressing. Yeah, that's right. And it's an awesome you know, profession. A lot, of people, a lot of people can't even buy a new car from the hairdressing salons. No. But you, you've proved, yeah. you proved somebody... Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, you've proved that hairdressing can... You know, you can live the life of your dreams and achieve what you want. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Yeah. I love the I love the thing that you you said there, you know, that you took a year off as well. Yeah. And then instead of going like, you know, I want a thirty stylist salon, mm. starts with a little boutique. Because the thing is, I think it does take you back, takes you back to your roots, and yeah, you know, this is how it really works again, stripping yeah. it all back again. Yeah. Yeah, it's been fascinating. We, we need to. Sorry, go on. No, so it's been really fascinating yeah. because you. I did, I, you know, when I first opened, I didn't have a computer. I was just using an appointment book again, pencil, paper, and, paper and pencil. And my God, did I notice it. <laughs> so, you know, as soon as I could, I, I actually come across a really, really good piece of software that's so cheap. It's just, but it's awesome. Great for, like, whether you're a small salon or whether you're a large salon. It's brilliant. You can run it on your phone. Just, just push that. Is that salon software or independent? It's um, salon software, yeah. Because I, I don't know, I found most salon software just it doesn't do the job. Yeah, it just this, doesn't do the job at all. This this is really good. I mean, it's it's worth. They do a, a free trial. It's just easy peasy the way they've set it up. Um, and it's uh, a company called Timely. Get it's called GetTimely.com, um, but the software itself is called Timely, and it's um, it's it's great. I mean, there's some things it doesn't do, but, you know, it does almost everything um, as far as texting the clients and all that sort of stuff. And it's really, you know, you, you put your credit card in. If you like it, you know, you, you try it for a month. Then you put your credit card details in. There's no sign up. You can stop whenever you want. You top your yeah, texts nice. up as, as you go along. And uh, it's easy yeah. peasy, but it's, it's just getting better and better. And the support's pretty good as well. Okay, Steve. Well, listen, maybe we'll leave the technology for another conversation, but yep. it's been great speaking to you. And you, mate. Get the spare room ready. We're heading over. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we've had our very first morning today where we can see our breath in the air. Yeah. All oh, right. Oh, so, wow. It's going cold. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll, we'll catch up probably in the week. It's yep. been great speaking to you. We'll and you, mate. And if, if anybody wants to, uh, you know, if anyone on the call wants to um, try and on Extreme 20, just follow the links and we'll follow through this call as well. Yeah, it's a uh, salon book called Salon Extreme 21. Yeah, and you end there. And of course, there's a money back guarantee, you'll get you get to, you get tons of support with this manual as well. Yeah, okay, Steve, thanks for your time. Speak soon. Take care, mate. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.